Microwaves are not as dangerous as you may think. Let me demonstrate. I've got this light bulb and I'm gonna make it light up in my mouth. Three, two, one. I wasn't joking. <laughs> Microwaves are much weirder and safer than I ever expected, which allows us to do some pretty weird stuff. In this video, I go through my journey and the interesting experiments over the last few months that led me to basically microwaving myself, but of course without harm. And during my experiments, I'll be taking off my protective gear to demonstrate some misconceptions about microwaves and see if anything happens to my hand. And I was very surprised with the results. Some other YouTubers have also experimented with this, and I promise this is safe. Just wait till the end of this video to see why. You should still definitely not do any of this at home, because that would, you'd probably die. So with that out of the way, let's get into this video. Microwaving food is always so difficult. Even after two minutes, my hot pocket is still frozen solid. So of course, I throw it back in for a little longer to warm it up. This scenario may be familiar to you, because it's a worldwide crisis that happens to millions of us every day. 30 seconds over and you're fucked. Explosion. Shrapnel everywhere. It happens all the time. I don't know who decided to put a demon core inside a microwave, but actually, that's actually an interesting video idea. I should try that sometime. But anyway, it's so frustrating watching your food go around, unsure if it's frozen solid or the center of the sun. Ugh, this happens to me every day. So I've come up with new ways to use microwave ovens that I think is really cool. I was joking at the start, but looking back at my footage, and this does look like something familiar. So don't try anything you see in this video yourself. This can actually be lethal if you're not careful. To solve this microwave cooking crisis, I got to thinking, and realized all our other kitchen appliances have easy access to see how the food is cooking. But in microwaves, they have this pesky metal thing in the way. I really don't like it there. Wouldn't it be easier to see how your food is cooking if you'd had a giant hole in the side of a microwave? So I got to annihilating this microwave's rear end. Now there's many things you shouldn't do with a microwave and this is one of them. But I think the stupidest thing you can do with a microwave oven is sticking your hand into it, then turning it on to feel your food actively cooking in your hand so you can tell if it's still hot or cold. But that is exactly what I want to do. Wait, what am I doing? This is highly dangerous and stupid. And all of you agree. You're like, I did a thing, I but did something more dangerous. I did a thing, 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 Alexa's son? You're right, I have an Australian accent and seem to have no self-preservation. So before I do anything with this microwave, I should consider the hazards and safety equipment I need in order to prevent the microwaves from burning my flesh. Because that it's would- It's a shame you've had to tame your content, but this was still really fun to watch. Thanks for the compliment. It really inspires me to stick my hand into a microwave oven. Start. Start. So, how will I not get cooked? Well, I heard microwaves have this mesh screen that blocks the mini microwaves from leaving and singeing your eyeballs. That sounds dangerous, so I was thinking I need some protection. Would a mesh screen around my hand block the microwaves from causing harm? Perhaps, but there's one problem. How does this mesh even work? Why does this seemingly magical mesh even block the microwaves from entering through the holes and burning my hand? So I did some searching and it confuses me. The holes in the mesh are too small. Microwaves are too big to get through the holes. The holes are too small for the longer waves. For complicated reasons, not important. But the other one was so simple. It's too big. How come the microwaves can't fit through the holes? It's a brilliant question, which we are not going to answer. What? Why? I just want to understand this so I can feel safe protected my hand. So what's going on? Honestly, I can't figure it out. Microwaves are like 12 centimeters long while these holes are like 100 times smaller. So of course it doesn't fit, but I'm not really satisfied with that answer. Unless of course it goes through the square hole. The diagrams show these wiggly lines called light waves as though they're tangible objects that can't fit through the tiny holes. But the wavelength is on the axis perpendicular to the diameter of the hole though. So why does the length of it even matter? Looking at this diagram, you'd think then that its amplitude is the issue. No. The size of waves in these diagrams are just graphs of the strength of electric and magnetic fields and do not represent actual places in 3D space. Photons travel in straight lines and the waves and diagrams are representing different properties of photons, not its actual physical movement. I'm just showing this because saying microwaves are too big is really easily misunderstood. So these are both the same thing, just represented differently, and still neither of these diagrams show why they can't fit through the small holes. So I still don't know what the fuck is going on. And then I looked at other diagrams of light going through holes, but now the light is straight, 
and once it comes through the hole it becomes gay. So they do fit through the hole. The energy of a photon in an electromagnetic wave decreases with longer wavelengths. So diffraction takes over maybe? A little semicircles? This is all probably a lot of math. I, I, don't, I don't understand. I just watched Steve Mould explain how this effect works in a video, which in his words, why waves can't get through small holes is kind of tricky. I don't think there's an intuitive way to explain it, but it falls out of the mathematics. I think my explanation is better. It seems you have to use Maxwell's equations, which I'm never going to get around to, but he did show this pretty cool formula for calculating how much radiation goes beyond the mesh. It's like one one hundred millionth of the original power output of microwaves, so it's incredibly good at blocking the microwaves, but it does technically get through the holes. Just a little bit. Now if this would work as a glove, I still don't know, but there's only one way to find out. And that's what I set out to do several years ago. So the first thing I did was search for a mesh glove in AliExpress. And surprisingly, the first results looked perfect. It's incredibly easy and cheap to find gloves woven in metal, and I was hoping this would block the microwaves and keep my hand protected. And that's why I made this hole in the rear of a microwave to insert my hand. I spent a great deal of time testing different variables on potatoes and wires in case I was wrong or if the internet was lying and 5G Wi-Fi really is a cancer-causing source developed by the government to wipe humanity off but none of the tests seem to have any problems. Potato inside. And it seems perfectly fine. The potato inside the glove is just stone cold. Just a normal potato. I tried other sizes of mesh, like making my own chainmail glove, but it turns out the rings were way too large to block the microwaves from cooking the potatoes or turning on lights covered in this homemade Faraday cage. Damn it. Even though, the wavelength is still much larger than the mesh. It, it does enter through the holes. I didn't want to put my hand in that. That that didn't look safe. What's the actual hell? No. Instead, I came up with a simple three-layer method that was more sufficient to protect my hand. The first layer was a reflective foil tape to reflect any microwaves that might make it through the gloves. The second layer was a leather glove to protect my hand from heat due to sparks and overheating metal as well as add some distance between the metal and my hand. And lastly, the third layer, the metal cut resistant glove I bought from AliExpress, which blocks majority of the microwaves from penetrating through and allows some dexterity of my hand. Even after these layers being considered though, I was still really scared because although the internet and many sources explains microwave plasma to be just iridescence and superheated gases and vapors, like fire, it does look almost exactly like the plasma that arcs to microwave transformers. So as a last precaution, I destroyed a power plug leaving only the grounding wire in place and plugged myself into the wall outlet. This was to allow any electrical current, if present, to go mostly through the grounding wire instead of my body. And I say mostly because electricity doesn't just take the path of least resistance. It takes all possible paths. Some paths can just handle more current because of less resistance. Plugging yourself into ground is weirdly a real practice that I've seen others follow like the YouTuber star Oparo, who also has no self-preservation. And while I certainly don't recommend it, it did make me feel a bit safer in case anything went wrong or if any microwave equipment malfunctioned inside from being overloaded. Even then though, I still didn't feel comfortable with this giant hole in the back and microwaves potentially leaking out. So I jankily held up a mirror on my lap to reflect any leaking microwaves that would otherwise be absorbed in my skin. This might be overkill, or more likely not enough protection and just stupid to do it all, but when I turned it on... I felt nothing. I didn't feel anything except the glove getting warm. I then tried again with more confidence and held a CD in my hand to see what it would do. So as you can see, my hand is inside the microwave. Let's just see what happens. Oh my gosh. I thought this was really cool to see, but also terrifying. So I quit then and there as I felt I tested the theory enough and there wasn't any point going further with it as there's really no use for doing any of this anyway. Yeah, I lied about wanting to cook food in my hand. I really just wanted to see what would happen if I stuck my hand into a microwave oven. Recently though, I was thinking more about this experience and realized I was kind of an idiot. Not just for doing it, but there's also a way easier, cleaner, and probably safer way I could have done this, which is a shame because it would tame my content if I didn't try to electrocute myself. Now to improve the setup, all I have to do is drill a giant hole in the side of a microwave and don't put my hand inside this time. I don't know why this didn't occur to me before that I can just hover it above the hole without having to insert my hand into it and risk getting electric shock. However, my drill couldn't even make a simple hole. It doesn't do anything. 
and this is when I started getting flashbacks from my previous project. But luckily, I finally found my metal cutters, and got to cutting. I made sure to make this hole on the opposite side to the magnetron, which is where the microwaves emit from, plus this hole is away from all the dangerous electronics inside that could still hold a lethal charge. Once I was done, I turned on the microwave as a test, but the video got corrupted as my camera got microwaved. So, you're gonna get your own mesh screen, <laughs> dear viewer. That'll protect you, and you'll be far away, and zooming in, just so the microwaves don't fry your brains too. So. However, it's pretty clear at this point that the microwaves are going to leak out and get me. So, what happens if they do? Microwave radiation is made of the same stuff that comes out of our light bulbs. Photons. So it's a bit weird to think that it would boil water so easily. The reason why water does heat up is because the water molecules are polar. Their molecular structure contains a dipole moment, meaning there's an unequal distribution of electrons on the molecule, causing it to have more positive and negative regions. This makes them want to align themselves with a the magnetic field. Microwave radiation creates a magnetic field that oscillates, and so the polar water molecules start spinning or rocking back and forth to keep with the magnetic field. It's just a lot of friction, which explains why it heats up a lot. So if I put my hand in this microwave, it's it's gonna cause my hands to heat up, but that's about it. Microwaves don't have any function to cause cell mutations, so forget about cancer. But I still need to protect myself from the heat, so I bought two more mesh gloves from China. This time though, I bought a longer sleeve version as I'd like to protect my arm. I also have this normal one that will go underneath for double protection. The holes in these are even smaller than the holes in the mesh door, so I think they're gonna be pretty effective at blocking the microwaves. Now to protect my eyes, I was thinking of cutting out metal mesh and fitting them to my glasses, but that would leave my brain exposed, and I don't feel comfortable testing that yet. So for now, I'll make a mesh shield. I can't just hold these up to my face though, so I'm gonna weave them together with some metal thread. I found this kind of relaxing, and it didn't take too long before I had a finished face shield with a mesh front. I now have a protective mesh microwave screen for my eyeballs and my brain. Now for the first test. I just want to see if I can even destroy the CD outside of the microwave and very quickly the CD cracked and sparkled as it absorbs the microwaves. Looking up close, and this is actually a DVD-R, not a CD, but I'm gonna continue referring to it as a CD anyway because it's easier. In slow motion, you can see the cracks traveling through its surface like it's exploring or something, almost alien-like. Now I want to hold this in my hand, so I've come up with a new layering method to protect myself. First is a cotton glove for comfort, next is a rubber glove for insulation, then I put on a thicker rubber glove before putting on the first metal mesh glove, and then finally the long sleeve metal mesh glove. Now I can test it with this CD. I think before I try to put a CD over the surface, I'm gonna wave my hand over the top just to see if I feel anything. And three, two, one. I don't feel anything. The humming sound it's making is not audible to my hearing. I don't feel anything. As it's an electrical interference my mic is picking up, but it does sound pretty cool. Nothing. So I'll grab my disc now. Yeah, we'll see if this works. For some reason, it was really difficult to get this CD to do much. It warmed it up slightly. I could rarely get it to spark outside of the hole, Nothing. so I assume the waves probably aren't very strong outside of the microwave. And it wasn't until I started putting the CD back into the hole that it sparked easily again. I'm not entirely sure what causes these sparks, but I'm guessing the oscillating electric field generated by the microwaves induces charges that want to move around freely in the CD, but because of the way CDs are designed, the charges struggle to move under the surface and end up breaking it apart to make the necessary connections. What I find kind of scary though is microwaves are both invisible and also passes through a lot of objects, which means you don't even know where they're coming from and they could be anywhere. For example, I will put this on and if I put this disc right here... God... Oh... I think that's kind of scary. I wouldn't even be able to notice that there was a microwave under this table if I was completely blind. Okay, I would have heard that. And you definitely shouldn't do this if you have a pacemaker. So yeah, my hands do warm up a bit when they're inside the gloves, because having that many layers on just isn't very comfortable. Yeah, my hand's fine. For my next experiment, I was inspired by an Red video where he put burning matches in a microwave, and they generated a fireball of plasma that he captured in a beaker temporarily. I'm gonna try this myself, except instead of it being behind walls, I want to hold this plasma in my hand. 
Unfortunately, I think the microwaves are just too weak outside of the hole and I was rather disappointed. So I'll improvise on this later. At this point, I've tested a bunch of CDs, but I want to make my microwave even more powerful, as it's clearly lacking in power here. So I decided to bypass the safety switch in this microwave so it can cook while the door is open. All I gotta do is smash away the door plugs so I can slot them in, tricking the microwave to think the door is closed. Now I will have access to the microwave source where the strongest power is emitted. Then hopefully I can get the plasma trick to work in my hand. I then spent hours trying to get this microwave to turn on again with no success until I lost my mind and decided to go all in and bypass this microwave internally. This is the most dangerous part of the video. And there you go as the internals are kind of scary. The first thing I want to do before I touch anything in the microwave is to remove any high voltage electricity that might be still in the system. So I have this really long screwdriver here and I'm gonna short out the high voltage capacitor. Seems like there's no voltage. It seems there's two switches here. Pull those out if I can. I decided to move the rest of these experiments to a metal shed because I figured it would block the microwaves from entering the open air and disrupting local communication frequencies. I don't want the ACMA or local hams to get annoyed by my silly experiments messing with their broadcasts or Wi-Fi. Now I had taken all the switches out for me to bypass and I wrapped tape around them to keep them on. Finally, it's time to test if this microwave still works. Okay, so I can start it, but it it won't do anything, it just counts down. <sighs> okay. This didn't really work very well, and I think microwave ovens have a self-destruct mechanism if the buttons aren't all pushed down correctly, as that would indicate the door isn't closed properly, and so my fuse broke. I don't have a suitable replacement fuse though, so instead I found something else to slot in. Once again, I'm being reminded of demon cores, and I swear I'm not even trying! I mean the guy's name was ironically Slotin, and he's known for slotting in that screwdriver. I then tried holding the buttons down with clamps to see if that helps. Can't go wrong with this, right? Start. Now that it works and the door definitely leaks microwaves, I could feel the warmth on my finger. I don't really like the look of it. I just want to be able to put my hand closer to the magnetron without, without it looking like this. To do this, I carefully ripped out the internal components and started tearing this microwave apart with my metal cutters. Okay, I think we're done. this is all we need. Just, 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 th just this part. It's fine. I've given it a little clean up over the top thing on the side, back in place. It's snug. And now I just gotta fill it up with all of these electronics again. So I think I've finished putting all the stuff back together again. I just wanna see if this thing works or if I've completely destroyed it. Oh, I can't believe it. But does it still generate microwaves? Yes. Yes, it does. It actually worked. This big hunk of junk, I actually put back together somehow. Then, unfortunately, at 4am, tragedy struck. A bunch of my glassware got knocked over, which was pretty sad. So if you want to support me, I have a Patreon. However, the microwave was fine, and I quickly got back to working on it again. This time, however, I actually bought a fuse. There's no way I was going to use a screwdriver for the rest of this video. That would be too much of a core issue. I then marked out some acrylic to cover the holes. I'm not skilled in this area of fabrication, and I'm not looking to make it pretty either. I just want it to be functionally safe. Yeah, cool, that makes me feel a little better. I've baby-proofed it for myself. Is it bad that I'm using duct tape to hold it together? I mean, I think duct tape's pretty strong. And this is the finished microwave. It doesn't look pretty, but I think it will do the job. Now it's time to test this right above the magnetron. However, I'm not very confident that I put this thing back together properly. I'm just putting random screws back and they all seem to be going through. It is holding it together, so it should be fine. So in the likely chance that I fucked up, you'll notice I often like to sit in my chair with my legs crossed. Sitting like this prevents an electrical shock from traveling through my body to the ground as I'm isolated. Whereas if I sat like this and completed a high voltage circuit, I imagine it would be like this. So for my first test, I didn't want to get too close and just wanted to see if I would feel anything around the microwaves. Oh. 
Now that I felt comfortable, it's time to test the CD. This time, the interference humming is much louder, and you can hear the moment it cracks through the CD. It's definitely more active than before, but it seems to depend on the angle I hold the CD. I started to have a bit of fun with it, and I changed my mic to a shielded one, so now you can hear what it sounds like to me. It's actually pretty silent. My hand doesn't even feel warm, so it works. I'm really impressed by that. Now I want to test what it feels like on my bare hand. I think it's kind of like, oh, like having a torch. Do you, can you see that? And just like moving your hand through it quickly. Like if it's quick enough, it's not going to burn. It probably concentrate the heat of the microwaves inside your bones and your fingers or something. So it's probably not great, at least for extended periods of time. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And feel it. It just feels like hot air. It's actually kind of nice. <laughs> I thought it was pretty weird how little I felt from it, and I wanted to prove that I am safe doing this, so with the help of ChatGPT and some online calculators, I calculated something called the SAR value, which is a measure of the amount of power deposited by a radio frequency field in a certain mass of tissue, which phone manufacturers use to determine how safe their phones are with the microwaves they give off. I got a higher value than what is considered safe for one meter away, but I then realized the values regarded as safe are for 6 minute exposures or longer, and I'm only doing 30 second intervals. Not only this, but when I scrolled down this article about the SAR value, it stated tissue temperature, not SAR, is what really matters, as injury to patients is the result of elevated tissue temperatures, not SAR itself. So as long as I don't overheat, I'll be fine. I then persuaded ChatGPT to calculate how much 1 kilogram of human tissue 1 meter away from my microwave would increase in temperature after 30 seconds. And and I couldn't believe the result. There is no way I'm gonna be overheating if my body raises by that amount of degrees. So I just gotta test if this is real. Because my body is mostly made of water, it makes sense to try to test this with a cup of water. And as it absorbs microwave radiation, it should heat up the water, which I can measure by this thermometer right here. And that should tell me Basically, how much microwave energy is being transferred into this water here? Starting off at 25.7 degrees Celsius, I then start the microwave with a timer in the top left corner. And after 30 seconds, let's see if it's a dangerously higher temperature. And 25.7 degrees. Exactly what it was before. Surely this still can't be right though. I must have done something wrong. So I tried again, let the timer run out, and recorded the temperature. Now it's 25.6 degrees? It's gone down. How the fuck? Just to be sure, I did it again a third time. But this time, it was 25.5 degrees? It's gone down again! I concluded maybe it's just in a dead zone or something. So I wanted to do the experiment again, but this time in a container with a lid. So I can safely hold it above the microwave where my hands are to guarantee I've got it in a hot spot. So this water is starting off a little bit warmer than the other one. This is much closer than the one meter distance I used to calculate that pathetic temperature increase. So surely this will heat up the water now. Um, okay, it's raised about one degree, a little bit over a degree Celsius. I think that's expected for the kind of distance I'm putting it at. But a one degree Celsius increase is still not something I'm going to be worried about happening in my hands. But also, this might even be unrealistic because unlike food and a cup of water, your body actively regulates its temperature. Your own blood flow would cool down your hands like a radiator. And because microwaves penetrate somewhat deeply, that spreads the energy out more evenly, preventing rapid local heating like you get from hot metal objects on skin. However, while that can seem somewhat helpful, your body lacks pain receptors in some fatty tissues, so it's important to keep exposure in reasonable time intervals so you don't get any blisters. But anyway, I tried this again, really trying to get the water in a hot spot that I could feel, hoping I'd get a more interesting result. 28.5 degrees. It was around 0.8 degrees Celsius of an increase, and that's like, it was like here. It just feels like regular water, it doesn't, it doesn't feel warm. For my next test, I wet this rag. 22 degrees, 23, 24, 25. My idea was that because the water isn't freely moving around in this rag, it should replicate tissues and tendons more than the freely flowing cup of water. 19 degrees? What? I'm down like 3 degrees. 24. Just as it was before, that's weird. There's a little fan inside, and I think I'm just feeling the hot air. I don't know, maybe my waving it around cooled it down from evaporation or something. I no longer felt scared of the microwaves. It feels really nice. <laughs> feels like my hands are just get, getting warmed by a little fire. So I decided to test if it's possible to burn a CD in my hand, but now without the protective gloves. 
What? I'm right? I can just do it with my hand? Are you kidding? As long as my hand isn't there for long, it it's fine. I'm just surprised. Now I want to try generating the plasma in my hand again, like Nar Red did in a beaker a few years ago. Even with the higher power though, it still didn't do anything. I didn't want to give up though, because I'm sure it would look cool. So I've put this metal reflector about 12 centimeters above the magnetron, because that should greatly increase the amount of power going to the match, as the microwaves will make multiple passes concentrating them in this space as it bounces back and forth in standing waves, which is the same way that your microwave usually cooks your food. And I think removing the resonant cavity is why this has been so pathetic lately. Kind of pathetic? So hopefully this reflector gives its power back. I wanted to start off with just a match and waited to see what would happen. It completely vaporized. This was exciting to see, and so I set it up again, but this time with a beaker above to catch the plasma. God. Unfortunately, this didn't quite work, as the beaker and match weren't aligned very well, and the matches burn out really quickly. I decided a better option would be to use a random stick I found outside. I have a stick. And hold it in my protected hand. Oh my god. Whoa. It's so bright that I can't look at it directly without burning my oh, eyes. It. Jesus! What the fuck? It's producing the plasma very consistently in a spot just to the side of the magnetron oh. in the direction of where your food cooks. That was interesting. That was interesting. Now I was ready for capturing the plasma in my hand. Attempt one. This is quite nerve wracking to place my hand in this small space, but I'm confident I'll be fine. Holy shit! And I'm not dead. It worked! I held plasma in my hand. This is cool, but I want it to last longer. Attempt two. I've set up this blowtorch for more efficiency in my process by easily lighting the stick on fire. Oh, it's only there for like half a second. On the third attempt, I tried a much bigger beaker. But this just didn't do much. On the fourth attempt, I went back to the small beaker that initially worked, but it's just really finicky and difficult to get it to work. So I think I need a different setup. Here is my refined setup. It's two adjustable retort stands holding a metal sheet from the original body of the microwave, and the reflector is positioned 12 centimeters away to match the wavelength of the microwaves. The large beaker barely fits though, so I'm gonna try this setup at two wavelengths distance as well. Another thing I did was convert the side of the microwave with the hole into a camera attachment with mesh to protect you guys from getting fried. It looks fantastic, I know, and is actually way better than what I've been using up till this point. Now testing a CD with this microwave reflector, and it definitely gets destroyed much faster. I spent like an hour just testing different heights and materials until I came across the magic of the metal spike. For some reason, it's just really good at initiating the plasma when I poke it with a hot stick. Finally, it worked again. Oh yes, I just need that to happen again, but with my hands there. I also started getting sick of these random sticks I was finding because they're really inconsistent as not all of them burn the same way. A suitable replacement I found was these wooden skewers. They burn really easily and are way more consistent and less messy than the garden sticks. I also decided to try aluminium foil, which gave some lighter colored plasma, but it still wasn't quite working at 24 centimeters. I then discovered that if I rest it on the metal spike, leaving it slightly open, just like a demon core, it actually generates the plasma much more consistently. I also started getting a lot better with practice and moved the reflector back down to 12 centimeters once I felt more comfortable with it. Suddenly, it's a lot more vigorous and scary, and just a few more attempts later, I started to get the plasma to actually stain the beaker while I held it. It's extremely difficult doing this because at this point the gloves were starting to get pretty uncomfortably hot as they kept sparking from time to time and melting the outside steel on its surface. <laughs> That's the best result I've had so far. That's so cool. But with enough attempts, it finally started to work as I hoped. Oh yeah. Oh. There we go. Before it broke though, I got this really amazing shot in slow motion, but I do warn you, this flashes in a way that could be pretty bad for epilepsy, so skip this part if you need. I really love how this looks. And so many people quoted this line from Spider-Man when they saw this. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. 
And don't worry, looking at my hands, they are still perfectly fine despite getting a little uncomfortably hot in the gloves. But I'm not done. Last night I was thinking, with everything I've shown and learnt so far about microwaves, I'm now curious if anything would even happen if I took off the protective mask from my eyeballs and brain. So I got to looking up what would happen to see if I can even test this for myself, and I came across some really scary stuff. I somehow recorded my screen off center, don't worry about it, I'll just zoom in awkwardly. Um, their eyeballs may explode from the pressure buildup as the water in them turns to steam. After a few minutes, the heat will have penetrated deep into their bodies, causing their internal organs to rupture and boil. Oh man, maybe I shouldn't do this. However, I started to notice a pattern. All my results on Google are just people answering questions on Quora without any scientific articles showing up. And so most information is just people's opinions backed by anecdotal evidence, but I do have some anecdotal evidence for what it may feel like. Another thing I noticed is people on Quora really love to tell stories and then base their entire conclusions based on something that may or may not have actually happened. One story was of an electrician that warmed up their hands in front of an RF transmitter, and then decades later developed arthritis. Arthritis in the hands, in old people, that's weird. The majority of their stories weren't even personal ones, just tales they've heard somewhere. And I tried looking up these cases or tales, but the first results I found were just articles debunking them. The first result is, is there any basis to a story about this happening? <laughs> or they linked to Facebook conspiracy accounts about 5G Wi-Fi. Did a 5G cellular network test cause hundreds of birds to die? Like, as if it's like a kill box from Halo where the birds just fly through and oh, it's too close and they just, they just fall down. They kind of make it sound that way. Authored by a man named John, who runs several anti-5G conspiracy websites and social- Okay, so it's just fake. And then I came across Bob. This guy is kind of insane. This guy claims to have put his hand inside a high intensity microwave field of 10,000 watts. That's 10 times more than my microwave. All my fingers were intact, there was no burning of my hand, nothing, and there was no residual effect whatsoever. The entire demonstration lasted 10 to 20 seconds. Just to demonstrate how safe it is. Who is this guy? In September 21st, Bob Schiffman passed away. Okay, well, I hope that wasn't the reason why. <laughs> Whoa! He has been working with microwave heating for over 50 years and is considered among the leading microwave consultants in the world. He has this big list of being way too overqualified in life. Has over 40 publications covering all areas of microwave ovens. This guy's obsessed with microwaves. Until he died at the age of 86 by liver disease, not cancer. So, I can take the mask off. Right? Well, there was this one article stating that microwaves affect your biology. Oh, we got some nice diagram here of your mitochondria being ripped apart. I I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> but they kept stating that the research available was often unrepeatable and there were a lot of unknown variables. It seems that no one fully understands what's going on with a lot of microwave related injuries. So it's still just very speculative. I'm just going into uncharted territory, I think. They also claimed that a study showed microwaves cause skin cancer. But I looked into their reference, and it really wasn't that relevant to my case. Two hours day- TWO HOURS DAILY! Unless I'm actually a mouse and trapped in a cage where I'm exposed to microwaves two hours a day, six days a week for an entire year, then I should be fine. It's still useful to know what happens to mice that are exposed to microwaves for that amount of time, but that's more applicable to if you were to use your internet router as a pillow for months. I'm not doing that. But yeah, if he can put his hand in a 10,000 watt radio transmitter for 20 seconds, and be completely fine, then I think I'll be safe taking my mask off in the distance for a similar amount of time for way less power. I think I'm ready to test this, and I think I'll be fine. Well, this seems like a bad idea. Looking directly right into it. Now finally, testing without the mask in three, two, one. I feel pretty normal. That's kind of anticlimactic. Maybe I need to like move around or something. I tried moving my head around, but I just couldn't feel a thing. Oh yeah, it's a little bit warm down there. I pretty quickly got bored of it and started messing around with it for much longer than the 20 seconds I was originally going to do. It's almost as if this isn't that dangerous. I don't feel anything unless I'm like here, and then it gets uncomfortable when I'm like here. Over here, I can't feel a thing. But what if I moved it even closer? Okay, it's just turned on. Uh, once again, I feel absolutely nothing. So let's go even closer. My eyeballs aren't exploding. My brain's not crying. But what if it was, you guessed it, even <laughs> closer? Here, take them. Take my eyeballs. 
take it. I dare you. I want to test something. I want to see if I can boil water by just leaving it there. I'm thinking this would give an idea of how food would cook. Yeah, that's it. Although I started to realize this was going to take longer than I expected. Removing the outer shell of the microwave absolutely destroys its efficiency. It's not boiling, I want it to boil. After such a long time being irradiated with microwaves, it didn't even get above 50 degrees Celsius. That is sad. This wasn't very fun, so I decided to have fun with it. Oh, shit. Now these fluorescent lights are much more entertaining. Lightsaber. I had a lot of fun getting myself more familiar with this microwave energy, and testing different things like what would happen if I touched the metal end of the light bulb. Okay, now I'm touching the metal part of the light bulb too. And what do you know, it's oh, fine. I love that. Another weird thing I've noticed is sometimes the microwaves emitted will bounce back and interfere with the internals of the microwave oven itself and increase the timer by 30 seconds. Really hot. Oh, the seat is really warm. That's cool though. The last thing I wanted to do with this microwave is something I don't recommend, but I assure you it's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's dumb. That is so weird. I. I did not think I'd do that in this video. So after all these interesting experiments and exposing myself to microwave energy, this is my final conclusion. I'm kind of disappointed in this microwave, to be honest. It, it should have done better. Now I should make it clear, I'm not claiming microwaves are safe, but they seem less dangerous than I originally thought. I also tried to explain how microwaves work in this video, but I'm obviously not a professional. And there's so much misinformation out there about microwaves on the internet, so please let me know if there's any incorrect info I gave in this video. And thanks to my Patreon supporters for staying around and being so positive during the wait for new videos. It does really help me out. Here is one of my other videos on screen where maybe you'll learn something cool, or how to make a nuke, who knows. It's what YouTube thinks you'll like.